Yeah. Now there's a little USB thing that comes it goes out right the side. through to your Apple. Yeah. yeah. Well, Apple, I got a, I got a PC. But yeah. PC. So long as I just. I want to make a movie. I'm working on a film called American Shoegazer. Yeah. It should be like kids. Yeah. Have this it's gonna be like kids. It should feel like kids and gummo, but about shoe games. Oh god, it's gonna be horrifying. So it's gonna, gonna be like me when I had to live in my uh, art studio. Yeah. And you're not supposed to live there. Oh. It was like probably like 20 feet. No, it was like like 8 feet by 8 feet. Yeah, it's an art studio for like 150. Yeah. Sounds like broke. Didn't have a job. Shit. Yeah, it was real shoe games, and it should start like that. That's what the movie should start. And just like. Me when my different run-ins with all the head shoegazers. So it's gonna have like that depressing Harmony Curry oh, kind of atmosphere. Yeah, it's gonna be depressing. Just like, super self like we're, doing, like we're doing well. The only one who's doing well is M83. Like that dude's doing well. Sir Ross is doing well. That, that's about it. <laughs> Who is. else is doing well in the whole know. shoegaze scene? I, I don't know. Know. It's all still pretty under. Yeah, but, but people still call it. <laughs> <laughs> So, anyway, it looks like it's been recording for a bit. So, hi, I'm John. I haven't done a video interview for a while. I'm here with Scott Cortez from Lowe's Lies Crushing and Astro Bright. He just played a pretty fantastic show. Thank you. Yeah, he even pulled out a Journey cover. Nice and shoegazy. So, Scott, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Doing good? Yeah. Doing good, yeah. Yeah. How's things going with the project? Things are actually picking up. It seems like there's uh, some sort of renewed interest via the internet, I think. The that, internet's uh, pretty great when it comes to that stuff. The internet was working 10 years ago. It didn't seem like anybody was picking up. I don't know what, what changed, but somehow... Oh, I know. I think we released a, an album on Line Records, and that brought us credo, or, or some sort of credentials after we did that. Okay. It was like... Uh, Oh, it was in Wire Magazine. So once it was in oh. Wire Magazine, I was like, I was really like, wait a minute, how did we miss this band? Yeah, it's like, yeah. well, dude, we've been doing this for 20 years. So that brought us some sort of renewed seriousness. Like, people began to take us seriously after that. Because before, I don't think anybody did. But after that, after we released the album, Chorus and Proof, that garnered a lot of praise, a lot of good uh, reviews of that album. And that started a whole resurgence. Apparently, like people have been listening to my stuff this whole time. So uh, you just released a, uh, a quote unquote new Love Lies Crushing album. That's actually the first Love Lies Crushing album. It's like a prequel. Why don't okay. you give a little uh, backstory on that? Well, we had already recorded that album, the tracks for that album, back in 91, 92 when we met. And then that was in Michigan, and then we moved to Arizona. And we recorded Blow I Lush Wish when we were there. And we sent that music, because it was the it was the newest stuff at the time, and we sent that to Project Records. And Slumberland we sent it to two places. Slumberland didn't respond to us. Project did. And then we played a beautiful noise fest and Project Sam Rosenthal was there and he decided to release Blow I Lush Wish. Um, but what we should have done is given him shiny tiny stars. And that would have been the first thing that anybody ever would have heard. Yeah. But as it as it turned out, that album just sat, you know, in the back burner for this whole time until um, your friend Rich Lauren got in touch with me and decided to release it as later. And I was like so happy because it had to be like the first final. Uh, it turned out to be that the back story. It's the actual first Love That's Rich album, and it sounds badass. It does. It's pretty awesome. Uh, how would you describe uh, Shiny Tiny Stars to someone who hasn't had any experience with Love's Lies Crushing? Um, there's no drums on it. It's basically like a reinterpretation of classical music just using guitars and voice. I don't know. I, people describe it the way they want to. Uh, I, I want to try to make it... With the Little Less Christian Project, I'm trying to make it as timeless and as fashionless as possible, although it's, you know, it's in fashion now, do that sort of thing, but... It, it seems to stand up pretty well. 
the asteroid stuff is dated for a reason, but the love and destruction stuff seems to, I don't know, be kind of formless. It's more in, Andrew Prince Mahogany said that it's more informed by painting, which is true. It's more informed by like the abstract color field painters of the 50s and 60s, which is true. So it's, I'm referencing things like that. Those sort of kind of things that influence me. Not so much particular bands. Yeah, I don't know if I answered that correctly. Yeah, it's hard Working to describe out. it. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. It's definitely it's definitely different from the stuff that people are used to hearing as far as the uh, big wall of shoegaze sound. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it seems big if you turn it up now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's definitely a lot. Going it's on. just not as harsh and noisy. Yeah. That's the that's what it is. It's very soft. It's a very soft. Though. Uh, what made you pick the title of Shiny Tiny Stars? Uh, back. <laughs> it's like a, um, God, I don't think it was, we didn't have, we didn't have a title for it. So, no. no we, didn't, we didn't have that title until, until way later. Um, until 97 when I finished that actual song, Shiny Tiny Stars. And now the new Asteroid album is called All the Stars Will Fall, so it's like these two albums are coming out at the same time on purpose. Because like the new Asteroid album is referencing the very first Love's Last Crushing album. So basically what's happening is Asteroid is ripping off Love's Last Crushing. <laughs> and that's because people basically used to say that um, Love's Last Crushing sounded like Mother of Valentine, which I love. I love Mother of Valentine. I was like, not really. I kind of, yeah, but... So then I decided to do a project called Asteroid, which would try my hardest to sound like my Lord of Valentine. And that's the, the path that I took with that project. And kept going and going and pushing it and pushing it until it comes right back and starts ripping off Los Angeles Crushing. So that now it sounds completely different and you can see what Los Angeles Crushing was always trying to do. So it, it turns it on its head. I can kind of see that, especially with the new songs you were playing, but it definitely went more into Love's Last Crushing territory as far as exactly. you know, the lack of percussion. Right. So, you know, people can see what we're always trying to do. It so, makes more sense because when you take a project that is veering in the thing that people say you are, like, okay, if this is what you think we're going to do that, and then we're going to keep on going in this completely opposite direction with this other band. And then when they finally come together, it's when you got them. Is, uh, is the full new Asher Wright album going to have that sort of vibe with those new songs that you played? Yeah, the whole album's like that. The whole album's super noisy and super ambient okay. at the same time. Okay. We just basically uh, try to be a, a, a Love's Last Crushing guy. Okay. Work it off. Since you know, I am Love's Last Crushing, I can work myself out. It doesn't matter. Why not? So I just thought it was fun to do that. And the songs... I don't know, this, this album reminds me more of the Talk Talk Laughing Sock album. Like, I think they're last, and so last one, but it's like the most serious. So this is like the most serious asteroid. The tone, the lyricism on it, the ideas that are kind of hinted at, just with the titles. I think, yeah, the song titles kind of hint at like some of the ideas, and then yeah, it's just up to the listener. Yeah. Care to divulge any of the new song titles? Or? Well, the songs that I played tonight was Unknown Color, and then the other song was The Void Inside. And Silver and Starless is the first track. I guess it has to do with evolving, ending, things, you know, things ending. Creation out of, out of destroying. Void inside, sort of like depression and, and also the, you know, the Buddhist tenets of the like emptiness and the void. That kind of stuff. Do you feel that this new album is kind of an ending? Well, it could be the last Asteroid album or a new direction okay. that Asteroid's going to take. Or I'll just form a new band that has that sound and go in, in that realm. Because, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm sort of done. You know, aping one of my favorite bands. You know, I think it had to be, like I said, it had to be done just to prove that we weren't, that Lil's Crushing wasn't an MVP. Right. 
right. clone. Right. Which is just lazy journalism, I think, for the past 20 years. Dead man. Uh, there was a pretty lengthy break as far as uh, Astro Lake. Uh, you played your first show in like 10 years last October. Right. Uh, what made you want to bring it back? I didn't want to bring it back. I think I started to see um, renewed interest in the music and didn't realize that there was this huge fan base. Like all over the world, oh, yeah. people, you know, I would just like see random reviews and stuff, and people commenting, and people from Mexico and Russia. Yeah, once the Russian band stole the name of of one of um, the Asteroid albums, then I realized, like, okay, I should probably bring this. I should, this is probably good. I should probably bring this back. Yeah, there's a Russian band called. I guess they're actually all right, but exactly. So, and they even, and then they asked me, like, hey, is it okay? I was like, yeah, sure. It's cool with me. I don't care. Um, so I, you know, I, I Christian them, like, yeah, sure, you know, guys, it's okay, it's okay. Um, so once it, things like that started happening, I was like, okay, I have to start playing shows now. So I wasn't, I wasn't, like, something I had to do, was, I didn't have this big impetus to start playing. You know, my friend said that I was, like, you know, it's weird, because I'm obscure, and, you know, kind of aloof, but elusive, I don't know, I don't know. Well, I try. I don't even promote myself that much. So it just seems like it was like, this organic thing that's happening. It's like, okay, since it's happening, I might as well start to meet it after that. That's what I'm trying to do. So there's going to be a lot of new, loves of crushing stuff. There's going to be a lot of new solo stuff. And then, you know, if Astrobrite starts doing, you know, really good stuff, then I'll release the case of Astrobrite. Yeah. <laughs> so you have, you have quite a few uh, releases lined up for this year. I think it's something about five releases. We've yeah. got Linters coming out on this Quiet Armies label. That's Love Slash Crushing. The uh, new Astrobright album. There's a Japanese release. Uh, Boombox Supernova, which came out last year. But the Japanese want to release it on CD. So that'd be a nice import that nobody can get. This is like, like all these Japanese releases nobody can get. But, you know, people are welcome to just download it. Oh, I'm not going to upload because that's what I, I find it. Oh, I go upload has gone. Oh, it is? Yeah. Okay. Shut down. Oh, okay. Well, that, you know. I know, I know. They never call back. <laughs> you know, I hate that. But um, it's, it works for people like me who are, <laughs> don't get paid anyways. And I just want people to hear the music because, you know, it's, it's really yeah, good. Yeah, it is. It's like all up and down. Yeah, it's weird. I don't, I don't, I don't mind that sort of stuff because enough people, you know, will buy. No, 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 no. They're gonna fix this. Few vinyl releases that that I come out and that, you know. That's it. But I think it's important for people to hear the music because they're inundated with so many other bands that actually cite me as an influence. So it's like they might as well just get the get me in there as well by any means necessary. So what comes next for Scott? Doing live performances and doing a lot of solo solo stuff and branching off into composing and maybe going back to school to get like a master's or something. Yeah, but a lot of uh, installations, difficult installations, GPS coordinates, music that I'm going to leave in random spots around the, the country. <laughs> like, that's the next, that's the next thing that I've been working on. So, yeah. Any hopes for live performances? Any oh, yeah. Performances? There's going to be a bunch of live performances coming up. I'm going to go to Europe probably in November to play with Jeffrey Cantu and Aiden Baker and This Quiet Army, uh, Pillow Diver, a bunch of basically cool drone stuff. Because that's basically what I started off as. I started off doing drone and then I met up with Melissa, and then we started doing Love Less Crushing. So I started doing like this. I stopped for a second doing the solo ambient stuff and the ambient with girl vocal, and that became Love Less Crushing. So now I'm going back to my roots. When I started off with you know, the loops and guitar soundscapes, and I'm just going to be touring around with that sort of stuff. You know, in a little smart car or whatever I can find. You gotta get that, you gotta get that Scion, uh, Scion exactly. sponsorship. Or something, or, or mega bus it, you know. Yeah. However, do the cheapest, cheapest way. And you know, we're just old school pedals and some custom guitars and try to rock it that way. Okay. 
so that's the point. You've got to trust where you finish right now. Any final thoughts? The internet to know. No, I got, I got nothing. No. I'm too tired and that one beard just took it out of me. <laughs> it's, the, it's the tall boy. It's the Schlitz tall boy. It always does it. Yeah. Always makes it quiet. I'm glad you came down now. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, you guys did a really great job. Thanks. And I'm really looking trying. forward to hearing the new stuff. I'll try to make it good. Oh, well, try your hardest. <laughs> I will. Alright, well, uh, thanks, uh, thanks for letting me interview you. Oh, yeah, uh, sure. I just hope I didn't, you know, sound like an idiot. No. Well, that's, that can happen. Uh, well, everyone sounds like I just don't want people to think that I am retarded. He's not. Or, yeah, that's, I don't want to retard people to feel bad. Yeah. So now you gotta be PC. Exactly, yeah. Well, thanks, man. Anytime. Anytime. Let's push the beat.